Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, it's been a couple weeks since I last uploaded a video, and this weekend's just sort of been a lounge weekend for me and my husband. Um, no hiking or anything, so I thought it would be a good opportunity to hop on here and just do a quick gear room tour. Um, just to show you, like, what gear we have, uh, how we store it, etc, etc. We actually used one of our spare bedrooms that we have here in our house to convert it to a actual gear room. You see it behind me here. Uh, we got this cool little sign off of an Etsy shop. I can try to uh, link it in the description of this video. You can pick whatever sort of icon here that you want. Um, I picked the hikers, but they have like camping icons um, and all sorts of icons that you would normally see on a sign out in the wilderness. All right, so. so here's our gear room. So we're gonna go ahead and open the door. And as you can see, it's a pretty decent size bedroom. Um, it's plenty big enough for us to hold all the gear that we currently have, although um, space is getting a little bit limited. We might have to add some more shelving or um, storage areas in here, but um, I'll just quickly go over what we have in here. And um, yeah, I hope you find this helpful and that you enjoy it. Um, so starting just looking straight out, you can see we do have a yoga mat in here just for stretching, um, strength exercises. My husband uses it a lot um, after his trail runs that he does. So starting here to the right of the door when you walk in are just four baskets to hold miscellaneous items. Um, I don't really specifically know what's in here, so let's find out. Um, we've got bug spray, um, waterproofing wax, we've got sunscreen, antibacterial wipes, um, our solar charger that we got off Amazon, um, some body glide for chafing, lighters, matches, um, this basket looks like it's primarily ski goggles, um, down here we've got a Katahdin pump water filter, this was our primary water filter for um, a handful of years we've since replaced it with a gravity filter, um, but we always bring this, one of us will bring this, one of us will bring the gravity filter, and then we also have this life straw which is our backup backup <laughs> um, that we'll use if we need to. Um, I think Jordan will also bring this running with him um, just in case he happens to run out of water. Um, we have a first aid kit. Oh gosh, I don't even know what's in here in some of these. We've got an emergency bivy or fire blanket. Um, and then here's just even more miscellaneous items. Um, <laughs> some random noon tablets. These are for my husband's trail running pack. Some sunglasses down there. But anyway, just a bunch of miscellaneous items that are small, don't want to get lost in a bin, etc. Um, above it, we have some maps on the wall that um, are just more for like decor or studying. Um, all the lists that we're working on. So we've got the Catskills uh, High Peaks. We've got the Adirondack High Peaks. And then over here to the left, we have the New England 4,000 footers. So Maine and Vermont and New Hampshire. Um, we've got the Colorado 14ers, which we completed. And then I've got up here a map for the Appalachian Trail. Um, moving back down here, um, we've got all of these hooks uh, lining this wall. So this is where we'll store um, this right here is Jordan's Abalung that he'll take with him backcountry snowboarding. Um, if you're not familiar with um, recreating in avalanche terrain, this is sort of something that you can strap on. Um, whoops. You can strap onto you um, sort of like a backpack or a sling or something. And if you happen to find yourself in an avalanche, um, you can use it to sort of help expel your carbon dioxide that you're breathing out behind you rather than into the air pocket in front of your mouth that you want to conserve for just um, oxygen. Um, and then we've got these... Um, neon light things that are worn sort of like a backpack um, for like running on the road specifically at night. Um, gaiters, snowshoes, these are my husband's. We both have MSRs. Um, his are the beefier ones. He's got the tails to go with them. 
um, for super deep snow. And then these are mine here. I just got them last winter and I love them. Um, they're the Revo Essence and his are the Evo Essence. Then we've got some cash bags for my husband's trail races. Um, we've got rope for rock climbing or glacier travel. Um, this was the rope we brought this with us to Switzerland. Um, and I believe that we also used it on Mount Rainier. All right, and then to the left of our rope, we've got our skis and snowboards. So I am a skier, my husband's a snowboarder. Yes, we have switched and tried each other's um, snow sport out. And I think it's safe to say he's sticking with snowboarding <laughs> and I'm sticking with skiing. Um, first, you have my two pairs of skis that I currently have here. Um, these K2 Sidekicks I used primarily in the backcountry um, in Colorado. Actually, I haven't used either of these since moving to Pennsylvania because I haven't skied in... Oh gosh, I think we're coming up on three seasons. Um, but these K2 Sidekicks I've had for a while. They're my backcountry setup. You can use, attach skins to them. And um, you can't see them because they're hiding behind this rope. But there's a Solomon binding on them that um, can actually release your heel. So you can travel um, sort of, you know, with your skins uphill um, easier. And then I've got these line skis here, which are my prim primary inbounds uh, skis. They're a little bit wider, so, um, you know, they're more of a powder ski than anything. Um, but they are a good all-terrain ski. Um, you know, they work well even not on powder, so, um, you know, East Coast doesn't really get a whole lot of powder that frequently, but they should still work out here pretty well. Um, again, Solomon bindings on them. I've got my K2 ski poles. And then my husband's variety of snowboards. Um, he's got this Oz snowboard. Um, he's got this snowboard. I don't even know who makes it. Is it Weston? I think that's the manufacturer. It's actually a split board. So this is what he uses um, when he's backcountry skiing. These snowboard bindings rotate and he can actually travel uphill and use this snowboard like skis um, with skins on the bottom of them. And then these two boards are his older boards that he uses I think just as a backup. Um, or like you know if the conditions might be early season or late season when the snow is not great. Um, they're both Adventure Snowboards, which is a snowboard company out of Silverton, Colorado. Um, this one's a split board. That's a regular inboard, inbounds board. Um, but yeah. And then we've got this closet, which um, right now we just store jackets in here for hiking, uh, skiing. I've got some ski pants. We've got our ski bags for if we ever travel with our skis. That's about it. Tracking poles hanging on the wall. Um, so we've got three pairs here. These are my Leakai poles that I use most of the time. Um, Jordan's got these black diamond hiking poles that he uses. And then, um, actually, we've got this set of black diamond poles here that... Um, are sort of just like a spare and then behind it we have um, actually a Whippet which is a single trekking pole with sort of this um, ice axe uh, top to it that you utilize a lot in backcountry skiing um, on steep or on steep snow when you're climbing it you uh, replace one of your poles with it um, but primarily if you're skiing that way you can still ski with the pole and then you have um, a self arrest method. All right, and then we've got our mountain bikes, which we don't use that often. We haven't used that often. Um, we both have specialized bikes. They're pretty, um, at least mine. I don't know about my husband's, but mine here obviously is the pink one. Um, it's a pretty low, um, or rather entry level model of mountain bike, um, just because I'm not like super into it, but we have it in case we ever want to go mountain biking. All right, and then we enter into this massive wall <laughs> of gear. We have one, two, three, four 
rows of hooks that are just used to store anything and everything. So I'm gonna start on the top row and go left to right and then work my way down. And I'll just go over like what we have hanging here, if there's anything unusual that um, you may or may not be familiar with. I'll talk a little bit about it. Um, so on the top here, we've, uh, we're starting off with some avalanche rescue equipment. So first we have our snow shovels, we each have one. And then next to them we have our quick draws. So um, if you aren't familiar with avalanche rescue um, or traveling in avalanche terrain, you always want to bring three things with you. Um, snow shovel, quick draw, and a beacon, um, which I'll show you at a later time further on down the ro road here. So um, snow shovels, they have retractable handles. You'll use that obviously if you've, once you've located your partner who's trapped under the snow, you'll use that to dig them out. Quick draws are essentially just um, really, really long um, probes that you um, will extend out and then you use that to probe once you've sort of narrowed in on a signal um, to the beacon that you're partner is wearing that's buried. Once you've um, honed in on a signal, you'll start using that probe and just start like stabbing down in the snow with it in um, a particular pattern that you would learn in an avalanche um, class to help locate the exact position of your partner. You know, you'll hit them with your, with the uh, quick draw the probe and um, be able to start shoveling from there. Um, next to that, we just have a snow saw, um, again, used for um, avalanche terrain, primarily if you're cutting a piece of uh, snow, sl snow slab to um, analyze avalanche conditions, um, you'll use that. We've got our two ice axes here. They're both black diamonds, um, identical with um, a leash and covers on the sharp ends. Um, I mean, this... Will also go um, on the point too for when you're traveling with it so you don't actually you know bonk your head on it when it's strapped to your backpack. Um, we have one ice climbing axe here. Um, I don't really remember why we got this but we have it. Um, I think we've used it once or twice before. Maybe my husband's used it more. I don't know. Uh, we have snow pickets here which um, we've carried with us and practiced with but never actually used. Um, we got them for when we climbed Mount Rainier. They're a useful tour, tool for creating anchors in the snow, um, specifically when you're doing crevasse rescue. Um, that's the uh, reason for which we bought them and used them um, for crevasse rescue. Same thing here, um, another way to um, form an anchor in the snow, it's a ice or snow screw. Um, you know, you screw it right into the super firm snow or ice and then, you know, set up your uh, pulley system on that. And then here we have all of these um, uh, rock climbing friends. You might be mad at me, but I think they're called quick draws. Um, we have two sets of them for um, rock climbing, for lead climbing. Um, and then next to it here on the right we have... Um, some rope and webbing, nylon webbing that we used, again, primarily when we climbed Mount Rainier um, or did some other glacial, glacier travel. Those ropes down there are set up for prusiks. Um, again, for crevasse rescue, you know, if you find yourself in a crevasse, prusiks are helpful to help you climb your way out. Um, Touching on prusiks, one thing I would recommend to anyone if you're interested in mountaineering of any sort is to get the book Freedom of the Hills. Seriously, it's the Bible for mountaineering, hiking, whatever. And it goes over in depth what prusiks are and how they're utilized. All right, next row, starting here on the left, we have our crampons. We both have um, black diamond crampons. They're pretty basic. Um, we have used these quite a bit in Europe on Mount Rainier. Um, we've used them in Colorado and we have carried them with us um, up here um, in the Northeast as well. We've got our micro spikes. They are the Catula brand. I've had mine since, um, no joke, 2012, I think. And they've done me really well. 
um, probably time to um, replace them because the spikes aren't super sharp anymore. They're kind of dulled out from, you know, being on rock with them, but I'll replace them here soon. Um, some Nalgene bottles. Let's see, where are we here? Um, rock climbing harnesses. We each have one here attached to them. We have belay devices. Um, I've got some climbing gloves, um, some carabiners, etc. And then next to that, we've got our rock climbing shoes. I have a pair of Evolve rock climbing shoes um, that I like. They are the Evolve Rock Stars. I got them again a number of years ago. I don't even know how old they are. And Jordan's got a pair of 510s. Um, we have a chalk bag, again, some more nylon webbing, um, a daisy chain here, which is essentially a nylon webbing, but it's got all those like little um, loops on it. All right, next row, third row down, we've got our um, skins, and right here um, are split board crampons that Jordan uses for his backcountry snowboard by, um, I think it's pronounced Wall, uh, I don't know, but this company. <laughs> um, and then we've got another pair of split board crampons by Spark. We've got my um, skins for my skis by K2. They're called the backside. And then behind here are Jordan's um, split board skins. Um, hanging in front of that we've got our hammock by ENO. Um, a Gregory rain cover for one of our packs. Just sort of like a miscellaneous um, type thing. And again, another set of split board skins. I think this is his um, extra pair, and this is the pair that he uses primarily um, by Spark. And then next to this, we've got our um, Avalanche Beacons. So Jordan's got a Tracker 3, and I think mine is a Tracker 2 behind it. Um, the Tracker 3 is the newer one, obviously. Um, he travels more in the backcountry than I do in Avalanche terrain, or at least used to. So um, he had updated his. Um, I didn't update mine because it it works just fine. Um, but yeah, if you're unfamiliar with avalanche terrain or traveling in it, again, you want your three things, your shovel, probe, and beacon. Um, this is what will save your life. Um, if you don't have one of these on and you are stuck in an avalanche, you have a far, far, far less likely chance of being found and recovered. Um, an extra headlamp. Um, we've got our compass, um, we have a knife multi-tool, and then we have, um, this helps measure, um, the angle of a slope. So this is a useful tool for, um, um, evaluating avalanche safety when you're out in the field. Next to that, we've got, um, our Garmin devices. We have our old InReach SE that we used to use. It has a cracked screen and is quite, um, quite old. So we just this year updated and upgraded to the InReach Mini. Behind that, we have another, let's see if I can get to it without knocking everything off here. We have another, um, couple things. The WOM, this guy right here is just a GPS device by Garmin. And then right here we have a ACR um, emergency beacon. Beacon, Basically, it's the same thing a Garmin inReach can do as far as calling an SOS, but it doesn't have messaging capabilities. Um, next to this, we just have a bunch of Nalgene's. <laughs> um, we've got this insulated Nalgene holder that I um, used to use quite a bit. Um, I actually haven't used it in quite some time. And then we have our row of backpacks and we have quite a few of them. Um, so I'll just go over them um, and how I use each of mine, what the purpose is for it. So starting back here, this is just a plain little camelback that I will use. Um, mostly like for mountain biking. So I haven't used it in a really, really long time because I haven't mountain biked in a really long time. But um, yeah, mountain biking, maybe if I ever decide to run in my life, <laughs> I would use that. In front of it, I have this really small Gregory backpack. If I were to guess, um, actually maybe it's written here. Yeah, it's a um, 16 liter pack, it looks like. Um, just a really small day pack. Um, I've used it 
for um, backpacking trips, I'll um, sort of attach it to my um, larger capacity pack to bring along with me um, if we're doing day hikes out from our campsite. This is a lot better to hike with than a big um, 70 liter pack or whatever. Um, next to that, we have the very first hiking backpack that I owned. It's a Dekine, um backpack that Jordan actually bought me in the first few months that we were dating. So back in 2011, no, 2010. Um, and I still use this quite a bit, actually. It's um, pretty full right now for my last hike. Um, I don't know if it's got on here what liter it is. I would guess maybe around 20. Um, but it's a really good size backpack for um, day hiking. Um, you can also use it for um, backpack, or sorry, you can also use it for um, backcountry skiing because it has um, ski carry straps uh, on it. So that's actually the reason he bought it for me back in 2010 because we were taking a trip to Tuckerman Ravine and going on our first backcountry skiing trip. So he bought me this backpack so I could carry my skis um, on it. All right, so next to that we have my Gregory uh, Jade 38 liter backpack. This is the backpack I use second most often um, for day hiking. I've got my Colorado 14 or finisher patch on here. Um, yeah, just a really good, uh, good size pack to carry all my supplies, fits really well. Um, I really like Gregory packs. I thought um, it's done, done me really well and I've had it for quite some time. Um, that's all my backpacks that I have, and the rest of these are Jordans. Um, I will add, I do have a backpacking backpack. I want to say it's like mm, 60 liters that I have shoved away in a closet right now because I'm going to be replacing it with the backpack that I'm getting for, um, the AT, which is a, uh, light AF curve 40 liter pack, um, and it's got a bunch of outside pockets that actually brings the capacity up to 55 liters. Um, so I moved out my 60 liter, um, I think, again, it was another Gregory pack. Um, I moved that out of the way to make room for when my light AF pack comes in. Um, but that's not going to be until um, the late winter, early spring, because they're custom made for you. But, um, so yeah, that's my backpacks. And then all of these are Jordans, believe it or not. And I honestly don't know that I can tell you what specifically he uses each one for. But I do know this guy right here, this is his Solomon trail running vest um, that he uses quite a bit. He's a big trail runner. If you didn't know, he actually just completed his first 100K last weekend, um, the night prior to Halloween, going into Halloween. Took him, I think, about 16 hours. Um, and he wore this Solomon vest the entire time. Behind this, he has his BCA Stash 20 um, backpack, which he um, is, it's used primarily for backcountry uh, travel and avalanche terrain. And it's, um, oh gosh, I'm trying to refresh my memory. It has a airbag in it. That's the word I'm looking for. So there's an airbag in it. So again, those of you not familiar with avalanche terrain, you can buy these airbag backpacks. Um, when you travel with it, you put a can of um, compressed air in the backpack. It attaches to the airbag. And then if you find yourself um, trapped in an avalanche while you're still moving, you would um, pull... There's a string or a trigger or something on your um, shoulder strap that you would pull that will um, engage the uh, airbag to inflate. And it essentially just creates this balloon or whatever airbag pocket um, on your pack that helps keep you afloat rather than sinking in the snow. It elevates you to the surface of the snow. So your chances of not being completely buried are um, increased. The chances that you're closer to the snow surface and can punch your, your fist through the snow when you settle is higher. Um, so it's a pricey, pricey piece of equipment, but it can be um, a lifesaver. So definitely worth it if you travel often in the backcountry and avalanche terrain. Next to that, we have his Mammut pack, which he uses most frequently for day trips. Um, he really likes it. Again, he's got that same Colorado 14 or finisher patch on it. He really likes it. Um, it has, oh, geez. <laughs> it has this rear entry 
um, panel that he absolutely loves and that I'm jealous of, and I wish I can find a pack that has it as well. Um, but yeah, it's got this rear entry panel, so he loves it for like when he's got in the winter, and that's our bear bell that you hear, in the winter when he has a snowshoe strap to the front when he's not using them, he can still access everything in his pack um, by just taking it off and undoing this um, zipper and panel. Um, this is where your back would go. Of course, you know, you've got your shoulder straps here. And yeah, super um, envious of this in the winter or when you have things strapped to the outside of your pack because you can still get into it. Next to this, um, he's got a 65 liter backpacking backpack. Um, yeah, I mean, pretty standard, a Gregory pack, 65 liters, use it for backpacking. Next to that, we have another BCA airbag pack. This might actually be the airbag one and the other one isn't. I don't know. I didn't remember that he had two different BCA packs, but they may both be airbag packs or they might not be. I'm not sure. But regardless, next to that is his old um, day hiking Osprey pack. So he used to use this prior to getting the Mammut and he just kept, keeps it as a backup. Next to that is that same Dekine um, backpack that I have and still use quite a bit. He doesn't use his anymore, um, but we do keep it just sort of as a backpack, uh, backup or if we have friends that want to hike with us that don't have any hiking gear, we at least have a backpack that they can use. Um, and again, you can strap skis to the outside of it. And then down here, I don't even know what these are. I think they're just old um, trail running vests and probably a camelback thing back there. I'm not really sure, but just some old spare backpacks again. All right, so that's our wall of goodies. Um, real quick before we move on to the shelf, just want to show you we've got some framed certificates and magazine excerpts up here. These are from when we finished the Colorado 14ers. So we have the winter 2015 edition of the Trail and Timberline, um, which is put out um, by the organization that keeps track of 14er finishers. And um, this was the issue that our names were in for finishing. Here's the list um, of all the people who finished the 14ers in 2015. We're sort of down here towards the bottom. And then these are our finisher certificates. So Jordan is finisher number 1677, and I'm 1678. Um, and those are um, put out by the Colorado Mountain Club. Down here, this is just my Z-Pax tent that I had just received in the mail. I've got to find a new place to store all my Appalachian Trail stuff because, like I said in the beginning of this video, we're running out of space. And we've got some empty boxes, we have glove and boot warmers, dryers, um, right there. And then yeah, right here we've got this tall shelf, and you have to back up quite a bit for you to see it all. There it is, tall shelf of bins, boots, helmets, um, etc. And I will go over what's in each of them. So at the top here, I'm not going to pull each of these down. But these three bins here are just mostly extra clothing gear, um, you know, whether it's gloves, neck warmers, neck gaiters, balaclavas, winter hats, um, rain pants, um, extra gaiters, extra goggles. Um, I don't even really remember what all is in there, but that's sort of the gist of it. I have one bin, Jordan has the next bin, and then there's sort of a... A leftover bin where it's things that both of us can use or it's got like dog hiking stuff in there you know dog backpacks um, etc I couldn't even honestly tell you what is all in there it's just sort of like a flow over second shelf down we've got mostly helmets um, so Jordan's two snowboard helmets we've got our climbing helmets that we use for outdoor rock climbing or um, terrain that has any rock fall risk. And then we have our mountain biking helmets. To the left of that is just, um, we've got our jet boils, we have some um, propane, some koozies. Shout out to friends of Birth and Pass in Colorado if you live out there and you want free avalanche education um, to sort of get you intro introduced 
to Avalanche Awareness, Friends of Bertha Pass every winter hosts multiple um, avalanche education, um, avalanche awareness courses in Colorado. Usually they're held at breweries or whatever. I'm not sure what they're doing this year with COVID, but they are free and a good intro um, to get you um, recreating safely in the outdoors in avalanche terrain. Um, yeah, just a bunch of propane here, jet boils. We have a bear spray and then just some fun little magnets that I had got again off Etsy. Um, just of all the high points that we've done in the state. So we've done Mount Albert in Colorado, Rainier in Washington. We've done Wheeler Peak in New Mexico, Black Elk Peak in South Dakota, Mount Marcy in New York, Crestone Peak in Colorado. Um, is not the high peak out there, but it was the peak that we finished the 14ers on. So I bought it sort of as a fun memento. memento. And since then we've also done uh, Mount Washington in New Hampshire. So I have to go back and buy that one. Next shelf down, we've got a huge variety of boots. So starting over here, we have my ski boots. They are Solomon Quests, um, Jordan Snowboard boots, my primary hiking boots, which are the um, Topo Athletic Trail Venture waterproof boots. They have a five millimeter drop. You can tell they're quite dirty. I don't really know who in their right mind would design a white hiking boot, but hey, gets the job done. Jordan's hiking boots. He's got a pair of Mammut hiking boots, but primarily when he hikes or trail runs, he uses um, these guys. So these are um, Ultra Lone Peaks. He gets a new pair like every few weeks. <laughs> Maybe that's an exaggeration. Every couple months because he just runs so much um, that he needs to replace them quite often. Just, you know, standard mileage, got to replace them. Um, but he loves them, and he uses these Dirty Girl Gators um, to help prevent rocks coming in. He's also got this pair of Topo Athletic Gators that um, Velcro um, that he uses as well. And then over here, he has another pair, um, actually another two pairs of running shoes. This is actually a pair of Topo Athletic running shoes, um, or trail shoes. And then again, another pair of Ultra Lone Peaks. And then you have my trail running shoes underneath here that I bought when I decided I was going to try out trail running. Not really my forte, but hey, I got shoes. There are some Nike trail running shoes um, that are pretty colors. <laughs> um, and then without pulling or digging everything out back here, we've got some other shoes. I think Jordan's got some approach shoes back here. We have, um, let me, actually, I don't know if I can, nah, I don't want to pull them out. But we both have um, mountaineering boots, boots back here. So we each have a pair of Scarpa mountaineering boots. Um, we used them again on Mount Rainier. We used them um, hiking in Switzerland. Um, they're more of a rigid, sturdy boot that has um, toe, and heel we toe and heel welts to keep your crampons on. Um, so we each have a pair of those. I absolutely loathe them because they're so uncomfortable but they keep my feet warm and um, safe. And then I don't even know what's back there, probably just another spare pair of boots. All right, and moving on, um, I'm not gonna bore you with going into the bins. I know this video has ended up being longer than I anticipated, um, but to the right here, we have our uh, ski bags. Each of us has a bag that we just use when, you know, if we're going to the mountain um, to store our ski boots, snowboarding boots, um, helmet, gloves, ski pants, jacket, etc. so that everything's all in one place so when we go skiing I can just grab my bag and go. Um, currently I think we're using it for hiking food storage. Um, so like, you know, when we go hiking we can just bring this one bag, pack it in our car and we've got all of our hiking food with us already. Um, this tote right here has our tent in it. We currently have the REI Half Dome 2, I think it's called. Um, we've got it. We got it in 2000. 11 when we moved to Colorado um, We are still using it um, And we will still continue to use it because that's a great tent um, But yeah, that's in there. I think we have like an extra fleece blanket. We have a black diamond uh, Lantern that we can hang from the top of our tent uh, For lighting when we're in there and I think there's pillows in there as well um, like actual real pillows because if we are driving to our campsite, we want real pillows, not those inflatable ones, <laughs> which are in there, but 
real pillows as well. So when we go camping, we literally just bring this entire tote with us in the car. And we also bring this entire tote with us in the car as well. Um, again, if we are camping right at our car. So this tote here has our inflatable sleeping pads in it and our sleeping bags. We each have a North Face sleeping bag. I have um, a 20 degree sleeping bag and Jordan's is a zero degree. And our uh, inflatable sleeping pads are Thermarest. Uh, to the right of this, we just have a bear canister that we got for um, backpacking in Colorado. And then an extra pair, like um, an extra container of bungee cords that we can bring with us if we need to like strap anything onto a pack um, or what have you. And then to the left of that, on the back of the door that we came into the room from, um, it's just a whiteboard with all of our lists that we're currently working on. So um, just FYI, we are currently working on our Catskills 3500, our Adirondack 46 High Peaks, um, our um, New Hampshire 48, and the Northeast 4000, which will ultimately all add up to the um, Northeast 111 which is the only one I'm going to show you because it doesn't have our personal information on it. But um, this is our tally sheet. So again, we, the two Catskill Peaks that are included in the Northeast 11, um, or sorry, Northeast 111. Um, these are basically all mountains that are all over 4,000 feet of elevation and only two of the Catskills Peaks are over 4,000 feet. Um, and then we've got the Adirondack 46 listed here. We have the five peaks in Vermont. We have the whites in New Hampshire. This is the um, New Hampshire 48 list. And then we have the peaks in Maine. And that all adds up to the Northeast 111, which is our ultimate goal. But yeah, we just keep track of it here. Um, but yeah, that is our gear room and my dog. <laughs> he came to join me. His name is Declan. Say hello, Bubba. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, let me know what you think um, or what you thought. Was it boring? Was it interesting? Did I ramble too much? Um, and if you have any questions about anything, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer your question. Like, comment, subscribe, share, whatever. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.